Mark Rogers TV, voice of college football, coming your way with some Miami talk on a Thursday night. We are nine days away from most of the teams playing next Saturday. We are just a week away from uh, some Power 5 teams getting on the field for the first time. We are just a couple days away, meaning two from some FCS and group of fives playing. But we we talk Miami, LSU. We're, of course, 10 days away with the special Sunday night edition of college football that opening weekend with the Tigers taking on the Canes. We got Cam Underwood on the line from State of the U. Cam, how you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you know, 10 days away from the kickoff of this season that we've been looking for for a long time. So downhill towards, uh, you know, not just talking about football, but having real live football. I'm excited. Yeah, the anticipation is just crazy. Because uh, I know you like the NBA, you like other sports, but it seems like they just shut down and then you blink and you turn around and they're back in uh, camp. But with college football, it just seems like forever. And we've been talking and talking and talking and talking about last season and going over and reviewing it a zillion times, plus trying to project what's going to happen this year. We will finally have a game of fresh play activity action on the field to analyze. And that's going to be so much fun. And it's a meaningful, meaningful game obviously for both teams, as we have two very talented teams going at it. So uh, your impressions of what uh, you have seen and heard and read and uh, reported on from Kane's camp recently. Yeah, you know, the team has a lot of talent this year. So I know that we lost a lot of guys, but there's a lot of talent to like. The skill position talent obviously is going um, some of the best skill position talent that you'll find on any roster in America. Excuse me. Um, linebacking core is, you know, top three in America. Defensive line, while has new names that, uh, you know, are going to replace some of the veteran contributors. There are, you know, good players there. Secondary has good players there, you know, but some unproven talent, but a lot of talent there anyway, even if it hasn't been proven at this level. Um, and a quarterback who at his peak is, you know, very, very good, but at the Valley is very, very bad. Um, and inconsistent at best. So um, that's something that's going to need to obviously uh, change, you know, uh, stable of running backs. There, there's a lot of things to like. So, you know, the team is going, uh, is working hard, you know, getting towards the season. The the Canes camp is now over because, you know, we're in uh, basically into season mode now. Uh, just got the media schedule for this next upcoming week. And yeah, I mean, we're in game week mode already. So I think that, you know, um, practices or, you know, we're going to hear from players and coaches on things like Tuesdays and Wednesdays this week, um, upcoming and then after the game. So like, yeah, we're, you know, in full game mode and, you know, everything is, is going in that proper way. Of course, you know, you got a couple injuries during Kane's camp, uh, to reshuffle a couple of things. Um, you know, Michael Irvin, the second starting tight end or the number one tight end coming into the fall or into camp. He uh, hurt his knee, so he's out for at least four months after surgery. So Brevin Jordan is now at the top of the position group, but that was something that I've spoken about expecting for a long time. So it just kind of sped up that process, and you never want to see it uh, or hear about an injury. So that was one thing. Uh, LSU transfer George Brown Jr. Um, hurt his knee, and he's out for an undisclosed amount of time. Um, and obviously he's going to probably miss the LSU game, which for him I'm sure is impactful because – he went to LSU, left LSU and came to Miami. So you circle that for, you know, a couple years down the line. Like, hey, I'm going to play against the guys, you know, that I, you know, want to share a locker room with. And then, you know, yeah, you have that kind of injury. Um, and then just a couple, you know, nicks and dings. Uh, you know, you have guys missing, you know, a day here, a day there. Uh, Michael Pinckney missed like a day of practice a couple weeks ago. Trajan Bandy uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, Joe Jackson. Uh, had like a preliminary or a precautionary elbow um, brace thing. Um, he was not demoted, but uh, he was working with the third team. Joe Jackson was uh, for a couple of days just to kind of be precautionary about his uh, elbow. And then he's back as a full go participant in practice recently. So, you know, a lot of things like that. Um, but yeah, just hearing good things about the freshmen. And, uh, you know, Mark Rick said that a bunch of freshmen are going to play um, like base offense and defense snaps against LSU. So not just special teams, although that's a place where I expect to see freshman play as well. So, you know, it's just kind of your normal camp. You, you see guys redefining their bodies. You see guys redefining um, roles or finding new roles for themselves on the team. Um, you know, like a Treon Gray, a Chalk Gray, who was a high school quarterback at Miami Carroll City, um, 
arguably one of the fastest guys on the team at six foot two, six three, like two thirty five, two forty. He's a big dude, so he's playing fullback, and all of a sudden, you know, he's up to the number three running back slot. And honestly, I didn't think he was going to really play running back here ever again. Um, but yeah, he's he's redefined himself. He's come out as a fifth year senior, and he's working hard. So you know, just a lot of things like that. Um, and I'm really interested to see how, you know, when things are, are fully settled across the board, who really, you know, it, in the music world or in the band world, we call it uh, tree shaking, where you go and you, you kind of shake the tree and see what stays and see what falls. And yeah, we need a tree shaking, you know, that LSU game, we're going to see, okay, like, yeah, we've heard about this kind of thing. And I talked about this on the radio today. It's a great indicator in practice, what's happening and hearing from the players and coaches. But you can only trust that in so far because it's against your teammates. It's under, you know, the watchful eye of your coaches and things like that. When you're now going against another team of scholarship players, then you're going to really find out really where things shake. So I think that Miami's in a good spot. I do like where the roster is. I do like where the um, the chatter is from everybody, from players to coaches. Uh but, you know, obviously this is a time for optimism. So, you know, I want to see uh, what happens on the field. And I think that everybody's really excited for September 2nd. A lot of hey, hellos to Cam and myself. A lot of score predictions and uh, Miami uh, record predictions on the chat. Uh, final scrimmage uh, just in the last uh, 24 hours, Cam. Uh, the As you mentioned to me before we started to record, the third of three is in the books. Um, anything that we can glean from the uh, various scrimmages and especially this uh, last one? Yeah, um, you know, just really that there are playmakers on this team. Um, on offense and defense, there's a lot of speed. Um, this last scrimmage, uh, Miami put the ones on the same team. So first team offense, first team defense against the best of the rest is what they called it. Uh, and the best of the rest were LSU. And it was, you know, the typical come from behind scenario. So uh, the coaches spotted the second team or the, the fake LSU team, 27 nothing lead, and then put situations together um, for the first team and everything. And, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but, you know, um, Malik Rozier led a final drive uh, and he threw a touchdown pass to Amon Richards uh, for the, the win in that one. So I think the starters won 28-27 from what was uh, told to us because obviously scrimmages are closed. So we just kind of heard uh, what Mark Rick told to, to the media. So, yeah, you know, um, just just players making plays. Um, Michael Jackson or Sheldrick Redwine, excuse me, had an interception in that game. Javante Dean, who's a, a Juco transfer in his last year here at Miami, finally starting to put together his athletic gifts with demonstrable skill uh, at 6'2", and he's clocked to sub 4'4", 4, 440. Um, Javante Dean has all the tools in the world, but last year he was just inconsistent with his technique, really kind of floundering in the system. But he seems to now be streamlining that and his knowledge and his production really coming together. So that was a big thing that I wanted to see and hear about. Uh, Trajan Bandy, uh, you know, he of the pick six against Notre Dame, uh, is really stepping his game up. No, he's not the biggest cornerback at five foot nine, but right now he's at a starting outside uh, cornerback slot when Miami has four defensive backs uh, opposite Michael Jackson. And then Bandy slides to the slot, and then Dean comes in as the third corner uh, in like a nickel package. So, um, you know, Bandy having that flexibility and, you know, just really great demonstrable skills. So, you know, those kind of things are, are really great to hear. Um, and just on top of that, being mostly healthy. Um, obviously, you know, I spoke about a couple of nicks and things. I mean, it's football practice is a collision sport. You're going to have some of those things, even with being as careful, quote unquote, as you can. Um, and, you know, Michael uh, Irvin, the second and George Brown, Jr., you know, obviously having uh, knee issues or um, injuries that, you know, did require some kind of time off. But yeah, otherwise, you know, you, you're mostly healthy. That's, you know. Starting quarterback, Malik Rozier, healthy. Starting running back, Travis Homer, healthy. Amon Richards, one of the best wide receivers in all of America, finally back healthy. And if you remember, he hurt his hamstring in last year's fall camp, and that plagued him all the way throughout the year because the hamstring is one of the largest muscle groups in your body. And, I mean, you use it with every single step. And once that thing is pulled and whatever, you know, it, it just continues to, to snowball. So you don't have any of those kind of things. I mean, you, uh, you know, you just – Really, really a great camp from an injury standpoint. Not perfect, obviously. But, yeah, I mean, Miami's in a really good spot. 
uh, you know, working hard. And now we're just really going downhill towards the season. And like I said, you know, it's time to shake the tree and see uh, what uh, what rises or what stays and what falls. But, yeah, we're in a good spot. So we all know from watching LSU for a number of years that they always wear the white they they have not worn purple uniforms basically i'm sure they have once or twice but basically the deal is is that traditionally teams wear dark uniforms at home and therefore they need to wear the white on the road but lsu switches it around so they always choose white because if they're at home they've got the white then they wear the road whites because the other team has chosen to wear the dark jersey so that that gives me a picture of what the game's going to look like on the TV screen, and you're going to be right there in the stadium, Cam. So the, do we know if the Canes go with the green or go with the orange, and do you have a preference? Oh, yeah, no, that's a, a great question. Uh, my our LSU does traditionally wear white at home uh, in Death Valley, and they, they petitioned for that. Uh, there was a couple years ago, I think it was Oregon State or somebody random went down there, and they were like, no, 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 no we're going to wear white. And for like a night game in LSU, which is like unheard of, uh, but they do have to petition the other team for that. Uh, and the other team, they were, you know, being jerks. Hey, let's do it. Um, and they said, no, you can't. You know, we're going to not, you know, let you have your tradition because we don't have to. Uh, but for the opener in uh, Arlington, Texas, at Jerry Jones World, I, or a.k.a. Uh, AT&T Stadium, uh, the Miami Hurricanes are actually going orange over white. And uh, there is a new alternate jersey, actually, and I wrote about this this week on State of the U. Um, Adidas has partnered with a company called Parley for the Oceans, um, and they're making jerseys from upcycled ocean um, waste. So like plastic from the oceans uh, being taken and then repurposed. Uh, and they're really actually kind of slick. So if you look at the numbers of the jerseys, the the threading or the detailing is like what Parley is known for. They have this uh, kind of ocean blue uh, and white colorway that they do across all their engagements. That is their that is their thing. Um, so you see some of that detailing, like on the side. There's a, a subliminal shadow of like a a palm tree and things like that. There's like orange cap sleeve kind of a thing. Uh, sorry, green cap sleeves on the orange jersey. Excuse me. Um, there are, and the thing that started to tip people off is um, Adidas and Parley have partnered for uh, different shoes and things like that. And actually, somebody asked me randomly, "Hey, can you talk about shoes for the season? Because I need a new pair." And I included the Parley uh, uh, Ultra Boosts in there, which have that same, you know, traditional colorway of that white and seafoam blue. Um, and yeah, Miami players were wearing cleats in that same colorway, and it kind of looks like almost dolphins aqua blue if you will so a bunch of people were like hey why are we wearing these cleats this is different maybe there's an alternate uniform and you know adidas said when they signed miami to uh, the apparel deal that they were going to make miami the premium or premier team for their uh design and their jersey tech and all these different kind of things so yeah you do have these um i think they're called defenders of the deep alternate jerseys um and yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think actually on Monday, the 27th, uh, the University of Miami is going to put those jerseys up for auction uh, as well with the proceeds going to uh, the uh, University of Miami Rosensteel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science, which is a world renowned school uh, for marine biology and marine sciences uh, to, you know, do research on helping the oceans and, you know, all these different kind of things. So uh, you have the, the cleats and the jerseys and everything, you know, in that partnership with Parley and Adidas, which is really pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're Miami's going to have, you know, orange alternates with, you know, orange or green details and then the other, the Parley uh, detailing on the numbers and things like that for the opener. So it's, uh, you know, I, I was thinking from when I initially saw the, uh, the cleats a couple months ago that it was going to be more of like a, if you think of like the LeBron 11s, kind of like a, or the, the Miami Heat South Beach uniforms, you know, kind of pink and green and things like that. I, that's what I had in my mind's eye. So when I finally was able to see the jerseys a couple days before they released, it was a little different. So I was kind of taken aback. But the more I look at them, I, it's really a sleek design. It's really cool. And plus the fact, you know, it is a, for a good cause, you know, like saving the oceans and, you know, kind of curtailing some of the, the waste uh, in everything, because, you know, if you don't know, and I mean, I'm not going to be on my soapbox, but like, you know, 
the earth is made like 70 percent out of water man so like these are things that matter to everybody and especially being here uh, in south florida and being you know very close to the coast and everything like you know the coastline and the oceans like you know i mean these are things that matter maybe a little bit more to me and where i live than some other people but you know uh, you know having that combination that uh, collaboration between all Adidas and parley for the new jerseys is pretty cool so like i said i wrote about it up on the state of the U, and you can go on there and check it out with some really really great photos and information yeah, I saw the news drop on the uniform selection and the whole process and, and what it means. And uh, I was just thinking uh, what a process it must be to be a company, want to sell your jerseys or your uh, gear to a particular college football program of that magnitude. I wonder what the process is of of uh, presenting that, presenting your pitch, the 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 fabric, having all that looked at and reviewed and, and the, the cost portion of it and all of that reviewed and, 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 um, taken into account and, and accepted and, and the deal done must be some kind of process there. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, there, there's a lot that goes into that kind of thing. And, um, you know, there, are, you know, Miami's probably, you know, obviously has a rep from Adidas, but you know, you're going to have some of the higher ups at the company who are really doing those kind of things. And, you know, having met a lot of people who work for Adidas over the years and, you know, from a variety of things and, you know, just seeing a lot of the different designs over years, you know, like, yeah, when Miami first went over to Adidas, uh, you know, people were talking about that look like the feathers on the, uh, arms of the jerseys and that was like supposed to be like a hurricane swirl and you take that and then you purpose that onto the jersey and you know uh, it, i mean i liked them it wasn't the best jersey ever but you know yeah um, i think adidas overall has really tightened up their design of jerseys and i know that years ago you know everybody made fun of every adidas jersey but i mean if you look at the the defenders of the deep i think what the adidas and parley prime knit a1 jersey i think is the official title man, it's a great design. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. And like I said, you know, Miami is a premium program. It is a national brand. And Adidas is really partnered with uh, Miami and put Miami at the forefront of the technology and design element for the company and their partnerships. And we're seeing that right now because, you know, there are other Adidas schools and there are even a couple of schools who have a more lucrative contract than Miami does who signed it after Miami and things like that. But those schools didn't get the alternates for the opener, they didn't get this parley coordination. They didn't get this collaboration. The University of Miami did because of the, you know, the strength of the brand across the board. So yeah, I'm sure that it was an intensive process and these have been in the works for months, um, but it's pretty cool to see. So I'm glad, you know, to, to have that. And they'll look really, really great on television come September 2nd. Cam Underwood, State of the U, joining us to talk Miami football with us uh, 10 days away from the LSU opener. Uh, a number of comments on the live chat about the uh, uniforms, nothing in particular that stands out, except for Terry King, who mentions that Miami could beat LSU even if they were naked. I love the enthusiasm. 